In this example, we've modeled a calculator within Cameo, and we can run it in simulation and show that it works as a calculator should, should work. So here is our GUI of our calculator. We can turn it on, and we can do simple mathematics. 8 minus 7 equals 1. All of the functions of the calculator work as intended. So how does that all work? How do we make that work? We can look into our system and we have a calculator class, uh, which is similar to a SysML block. It's more abstract. And we have the state machine, which is the classifying behavior of the calculator class. So if we look inside of our state machine, we can start to understand how it works. So we can jump through our containment tree and look at the different states, as well as what's happening within each state at the entry position. We have these different operations which are occurring. We have the uh, JavaScript code, which is just shown down here in these notes to, to help us out, help us understand. To be able to look at the JavaScript, you can just double click or go into the specification window of the entry activity of the opaque behavior. And you can see the code itself within the body and language. So and you can hit those dots and re recognize that it's written in JavaScript. All of these, all of these uh, operations are written in JavaScript. And you could also double click on them in the containment tree and see the different JavaScript code. So let's go ahead and run it again in simulation and watch it jump through the state machine. So when we run it, it goes to the off state. And we'll go ahead and just open up our embedded browser here, move it over to the side so we can see it. And now we can use these buttons on our GUI. So we'll turn it on and it navigates to the on and ready position. You can see that in the variables. It also shows the name of the state. And now I can start typing in different variables. So we'll type in a seven, you realize it goes up to the appending. You can hover over the arrow and it will show you all the different values that are available in the context. And so if we wanted to do 77, you would see that it, it goes through this appending as many times as you append numbers. So now that we've appended our string of numbers together, we'll go ahead and subtract. So that's an operation. You see that it saves the operation down here. And we will subtract 300. So, and then we'll hit equals. And that goes to the result. And notice we hit equals again. It will just keep on subtracting. 300 from the displayed value or the value that's in memory. Um, and we can also click the C, which is the reset. So when we click that, it goes to reset and sets all of your values back to the original cleared display. So another thing to note is that uh, you will see if you look at a lot of this code that it's always using this context with the dollar signs around it. So what you can do if you're trying to understand what's going on in the code, uh, you can change your language to JavaScript Rhino, which is what's being used, and then just do context. And that's going to display all of the values in the context that it's pulling from. If we go ahead and look at this first line, alh.getLastSignal of context, and notice we have nothing in the operation right now. So if I just go ahead and control V that in there, notice I don't have anything. But if I go to A plus, so now I've got that plus, and I can rerun it, you see that the operation is plus. So if I clear it and then just do like a multiplication sign, it's just going to tell me what my operation current status is. Additionally, if I hit clear and then hit seven, that's a digit. So if I go ahead and just hit up, it will take me to my last command, hit enter. DIG is seven. That would be my last signal as well. So if I scroll up to signals, I can see that DIG and 
OP for operation and digit are going to be the things that it will find in the get last signal command. Also note you can use ALH action language helper dot get last signal self instead of the context that will do the exact same thing. And that is used right here on this line of code for the operation. So if we scroll down to look at potentially some other ones, if, if we're what it's doing right here in this line is it's uh, changing the value within operation, which is right here. So this one is, is connected to the result. So if we do get value of context of operation, we'll, we'll see what happens there. So we've got, it gives us the star value. And that's because if, it's just giving us the operation from our context. So it's just saying, get the value from the context named operation. So that's what that line of code is doing. And you can reset it. So if I just go back, let me just force it to be something else. And you see that it just changed to 45, which is not valid. You're looking for like a plus minus subtraction or multiplies sign. And then this right here, this evaluation helper, this is something that you're importing. And what's happening is it's taking, all these are text or strings. So let's just clear everything and do something nine plus eight. So when I hit equals, what's happening, because this is connected to the result or the equals when I hit equals, is it's importing evalu evaluation helper and eventually it's going to be coming down here and saying operand one plus operation plus operand two. So that's going to be nine. And then that plus sign is that operation and then operand two, which is eight. So that you got text of nine plus eight and then it solves it for you. Now, if we look at the UI, we can actually modify it as we please. So if we just jump into this plus button here and instead of having the plus as our text we can change that to uh, let's just say hello it says hello now but then that's not what that's not what's going to be passed as the operation what's going to be passed is you go to have these values so now that I'm in the value and this location is right here underneath my hello block, hello slot, if you will, and go inside of there. And now I'm going to change the value from plus to world. And then I'll close that. So now I will save this and run this. So now we see hello here. So when I turn it on and then I click the hello button, you see that world is displayed. You can also use that ALH command get last signal of self and you'll see that the, the world is what's being sent over that OP for that operation that's right there so these up here are operations which are sending the strings the digits are sending the digits that you see here as well as the zero um, but they're just sending the value of themselves. So if I go to like two, the text is two. And then if I jump into uh, the runtime value, you see the value is two as well. And the element that it's fulfilling is the DIG, which is this right here. Note, I have had issues where if when you're running simulation, it doesn't update to the latest version of your GUI. So if I were to change this from hello to just uh, hi and close it and then close this, stop it and rerun it. In the past, I have seen it where this doesn't update to hi. It still says hello even when I replay it. So uh, the way that I get around this is just by restarting all of Cameo. This just seems to be a bug that is a little bit repetitive.
Also, this example is available with the, your installed Cameo. If you just go to where you've downloaded Cameo and then to the samples folder and then the simulation folder and then open up calculator.mdzip, you'll be able to find it. Thanks.